Okay, this is an unbox for the Soft Ears Volume. This is the latest release by the company. I've already kind of taken it out of the box because this was very hard to get off. This sleeve was very tight. I'm very lucky I didn't rip it. It's got a green color theme to it. It's fairly large. This is also difficult to get off. This is the top inside cover. Take that off. And you've got the volumes. They're an interesting color. They're not offensive. They're not garish or outlandish, but they're kind of unique to taste. When I first saw this box, I thought, man, that's a waste of space. I've seen sets like this before, and I'm not really cool with that. And then I flipped up this little trapdoor, and then it all made sense. It's actually not wasting space. It's got a user guide and um, a metallic owner's card. I guess that's your warranty card. It's got a nice case. It fits inside it quite nice. Looks classy. Seems to match the price point. You also have Soft Ears branded tips. This would be silicone. I'm not sure what their specific duty is besides being silicone, large, medium, and small. And you've got, um, I think these might be the Starline tips. And then you've got silicone tips, large. Maybe these are wide bore. I'm not sure. I can't read Chinese, but that might be it. So then you've got the user's manual in here and your warranty card. So that's what you get. The warranty card, three packs of tips, and inside the box you've got the cable which is decent. It's also got, uh, I actually like these a lot. This is so that you can keep these separate without them bumping into and scratching each other. Hell, hey wait, this is what Empire Ears never sent me with the Evo sweet memories let's move right along I still haven't gotten those by the way 3.5 millimeter with the logo on the side for soft ears it's a decent cable it's chai 5 seen this many times but I like it it's not too spidery it's got uh, markings they're actually little like o-rings that you can slide up and off if you want indicating red for right it's a two pin cables fine I like it got no problems with it do like that it up without a problem so the cable is totally fine there's the case there's the nice thing i never got with empire ears we're, we're moving on though life goes on take these out and they've got an interesting color um that's more of a matte kind of mint flat green and this is more of a more of a emerald kind of green i think it looks nice it's got a single dynamic and two ba's the comparison with the Dusk is inevitable because it's almost the same price. I'm going to double check that, and if that's true, then I'm definitely going to compare them. I'm just considering at this point. So that's the case. Let's move along and go ahead and talk about some music. Yo. Let's go. I'm the ruler, the leader. Okay, let's take a look at the graph for the Soft Ears volume. This is a roadmap to this review. You can skip the chapters. Part one is the unbox. We've already done that. This is the graph. Next is going to be versus another item. Number four is going to be music. Number five will be alternatives that you might want to consider. And then number six will be the conclusion. And that's basically how this is going to go. And there's a helicopter outside. And I'm considering whether to continue. I think I'm going to continue. This is a frequency graph. It is objective. It has no feelings, emotions, connections, there's nothing going on in the background, there's no close relationships with anybody, nothing. It's objective. As soon as a human opens their mouth and starts to interpret what it means, it switches from objective to subjective. That makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Because it depends on my preferences, or it depends on what 250 people came up with. Or it's not objective anymore, it's subjective. So look at the graph. Enjoy it for like three seconds. Ready? Three, two, one. Okay, the, the objective portion of this is over. We are now into subjective. The graph is, let me go ahead and switch the color. I was trying to be clever because it's the same color as the earphones, but you probably can't see that. That's a probably closer color. Um, it's got a baseline for a softier set that's really perfect for my library. And it sounds like it is so when I listen to my library. And we'll talk about that later. It has a gain that looks to be um, a little bit too shouty. 
I'll say, however, that doesn't really seem to be the case when it plays music. I don't know. You might look at this and think, well, you know, the SSR by Moondrop had a cliff like this. The difference between that is that there was also a roll in the sub bass. So not only did you have an elevation here, you also had a lack of any kind of boost on the other end, which doubled it. You, t you take something that sticks out, and then you take another thing and suppress it. Now that thing sticks out even more. So that was really the issue. Some people took the SSR and modified it with a bass mod, and they're very happy with it. I'm happy for them because that was my issue. And I don't tape stuff or use EQ since the EX800 days with Sony. I just don't do that anymore. But this gain is not having the impact that I thought it would by looking at it. And it's probably down to the... It's a V-shaped set that I have bass presence and the low frequency instruments sound like they're doing what they're supposed to do. They do sound accurate. So that does look quite like a ski jump nod to the Olympics going on right now, but it doesn't really sound like it in replay. So that you might look at that and think, oh, that's pretty intense. Wait for more feedback. I think that the way they tune this, which is really well, that that's not really going to have the effect that you might imagine. I actually think this set sounds quite good. That's the graph. Let's go ahead and take a look at the CX, C Audio X Critical Midnight. Let me put this up in a color that is easy to see. This is a set that has more sub bass. The mid bass is about the same. The mids, if we're lining this up at 1K, are approximately the same. And the volume has uh, a lot more upper mids. It doesn't sound like that with a rock and roll hip hop R&B bass library. With female vocals, it could be. With the f limited female vocals that I listen to, um, Annie Lennox, Stevie Nicks, um, it doesn't really pan out that way. I wasn't ever really offended by the volumes, mm, kind of mountain peak going on right there. Not really at all. Let me go ahead and take down the midnight. Let me put up the audio Hakili, which is a set a lot of you might not know about, but you will over time. This is a set that's got even more mid bass than the volume, and it's probably more towards people, again, with a library similar to mine. It's got definite slam, and you'll notice that these both really correct at about the same point, which is about 300 hertz, which is kind of the sweet spot. And it's got a little bit of a dip in the mids, not picking it up. It's got a, again, as I just stated, this peak is not really a problem. And it's also got extension. It's got, uh, this is a really nice set. Some people commented in the previous video and said they already have this set, which I was surprised because you got to wait, but I guess they got it in stock. And if you know that you like a good slam, and you know that going in and you're looking for something with good extension and not too much plastic or that balanced armature type timber, um, you're probably getting exactly what you want. You a really hard kick. So this is a very interesting set and I'll talk about this later. So these are the graphs. The Hekili is the more bassy but also more extension so it kind of evens itself out. Maybe towards a, a library like mine. Um, maybe not so much K-pop, etc., which is more something like uh, Critical's Dusk or even his Midnight, I would say. So let me drop the Hikili, and this is the set we're here for. So that's the graphs. Let me go ahead and stop this right now, and then the next part is going to be verses. Okay, part three, comparing two things. The C-Audio x Critical. You May Midnight. I believe that's a long name. Um, it's a collaboration between Critical and C Audio, and it was originally released exclusively through Hi Fi Go. Um, and I actually bought the volume from Hi Fi Go, so I buy stuff from them sometimes. Don't really have any problems. The this set is $285 and the Critical is about $50 less. $50 is not small money, so instead of brushing that aside, that's literally a really good IEM or two. It's gotten, there's so many good stuff in the budget range. And my people that watch my channel, $50 is not small money, so you got to consider that whatever you think going forward, unless there's a radical difference, the better deal is obviously Critical's release, which is interesting because it's also incorporating that they've got a give a piece of the pie to the collaborator and it's still fifty dollars cheaper so keep that in mind let's go ahead and take where, where a frequency graph is a pure objective expression of tools and software 
what I'm about to show you, and then you, people talk about what the graph means, then it becomes totally subjective. This is an absolute subjective exercise. The whole thing, the creation of it, everything. It's interesting though, it's how I perceive it. Base mids. I give the base and the resolution and tonality to the softest volume. I'd give the mids, treble, stage, and value to the midnight. So basically I'm saying that the bass hits hard and it's got pretty good resolution and I do like the tonality of the volume but I think that the mids and the treble, the stage because of the tuning and the value is better on the midnight. Some of this is stage and resolution. Usually these kind of hold hands but in this case they're not. Bass and mids, bass quality usually impacts and indicates the quality of the mids. That's not the case with these two. I think that the midnight's upper mid tuning kind of gives it to that but I'll go ahead and drop that, not spend too much time with that. That's the compare between two sets, and I'll explain that using music, which is next. Okay, let's talk about some music, since this is music here. We're going to talk specifically about Big Boy, Black Sabbath, Massive Attack, Radiohead. We're going to add Radiohead, the Pack Like Sardines track, because I used to use that in IASCA competitions, and it's very stressful on a subwoofer. It, it's got a rapid BPM, like a double kick drum that's really fast. Dun 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 dun. And then it comes a dun dun, a very low drone that's a lot like Massive Attack's Angel. It's more intense and more stressful for dynamic drivers where anything to do and resolve well and also not bork the mids. So we're going to add that from now on. We're also going to listen to Fleetwood Mac, Earth, Wind, and Fire, uh, Led Zeppelin, Elton John, and Metallica. And let's go ahead and proceed. Big Boy Kill Jill is the triple drop that's followed by mm, some vocals and then a four string bass guitar comes in so we got two low frequency things that are common across genres four string bass guitar is in all rock and roll and it's sampled a lot in hip hop and it's always present in R&B and then we've got the triple drop which is really something that is in mm, EDM trip hop and hip hop and we got them both in one track i thought this i thought the volume sounded like i mentioned before it's got perfect clean punch it sounds like a good driver is in there because it does it nice and tight and snappy and it doesn't seem to have any impact on the quality of the mids whatsoever. I thought it did this well. Listening to Black Sabbath Massive Reality, we've got a four string bass guitar plus a kick drum and the drum kit that are going on at about the same time from timestamp 2 minute 30, 36 for about 30 seconds on. A lot of masking can go on, a lot of diminishing one canceling out the other. I thought this stud pretty good. It's not the same as Planar's, whether we're talking about the Timeless or we're talking about the um, the Shure S12, I think that one's called, or the iSign from, from Odyssey. The, the Planar's got a specialty when it comes to speed and resolution that dynamic drivers will never catch up to. I think this does this pretty damn well, um, better than average. I was quite pleased with that. Next thing we're going to go to is swipe up here to Radiohead. Here we go. Name of this album is Amnesiac. This is just such a classic. Maybe some Radiohead fans are happy to finally see this mentioned. Track number one, Pack Like Sardines and Question Box. You can check this video on YouTube. The one that's synced with the traffic light. The beginning starts with water dripping out of a faucet. It's a, it's an epic track and it's really a stress test for low frequency, more so than Massive Attack Angel, which I listened to and I thought it did fine. This is taking the low drone of Massive Attack and act, putting in a probably a deck mix kick drum um, at high speed. A lot of BPMs on this. I thought it did this great. I enjoyed this a lot. I'm going to add this into future evaluations because it really is about the same as Black Sabbath. We're just switching over to a different genre where we've got two low frequency things going on at the same time. I thought this resolved that well. So I think that the bass is tight and it's fast and it can go across different genres and it's not overly um, energetic in the mid bass to the point where it's going to interfere with the quality of the mids because it didn't do that in the listening that I did to this. So I think that the bass is fine. Moving on to the mids, I'm going to go ahead and go to Fleetwood Mac because there's two male and two female vocals and a lot of people are familiar with this album and vocals are a great indication of mid quality and what surrounds the vocals. Listening to two tracks in specific uh, is the opening track which is Secondhand News. You've got 
all four of them in the track, and you've got Stevie and Lindsay a little bit more prominent than the other two, but they're all present. I thought it sounded quite good. Another one, which is uh, the least talked about song on this album, is something called Songbird, which I believe was written and sung by uh, Christy McVie, and she has a voice that can really get kind of intense in the harmonic area female vocals and I thought it sounded really good I enjoyed the replay of this and I'm probably going to use this in the future going forward well because out of all the tracks on the Rumors album the one that can most get on you and great with a grainy sheen to it if that's the way that something's playing back it would probably be this track and I thought it did this well so I enjoyed that another track would be Earth, Wind and Fire which is September and this has got a bunch of singers and it's got I believe backing singers and it's got trumpets I believe inside and it's just it's a very busy album going on uh, track I thought that this did this well I thought that it handled what was going on in the mids well and it didn't give any indication that the treble the, the harmonics the second third fourth order were, were a little bit overly emphasized it's not the case it's actually kind of rolling off but I didn't get the sense that that was what was going on when I listened to this track. So I think that the mids came off uh, actually quite good. Moving to the treble, we move to Led Zeppelin, where I listened to Hey Hey What Can I Do for Cymbal Strikes because it's a very good, my version anyway, very, very clean replay, and it happens repeatedly so your brain can kind of focus on it. It's like a beat almost. They're there. If, it, if the cymbal is muted, um, if it's got some kind of a, a peak and a cutoff, you'll hear a tss as opposed to a tss, where it's got a little more natural tail, where it's going to kind of come off. If it sounds muted, that tail isn't there. And if there's a spike and a dip that happens very close to one another, it can give kind of an odd replay. Some of those are harder than a lot of people get. It's either in your face, or it's not, or it's ideal. It's very rare that it's done very well. I think that the symbols on this actually sounded quite good. I was pleased and I moved to a track that I don't usually use, like a couple others that I've done today. And it's Elton John. I don't wreck music for other people because this is personal. But if you're a fan of Elton John's and you haven't listened to this in a long time, Funeral for a Friend, Love Lies Bleeding. This is an instrumental which is really heavy with the organs and keyboards that builds up and it builds up and it builds up and it builds up and then it just crashes in and goes right into Love Lies Bleeding, which is a typical song with lyrics. And it gets a lot more piano comes into this. The keyboard kind of backs up. Um, there's a lot of builds up. This is like a roller coaster track. There's a lot of upper frequency stuff going on here. And I thought that this set did it quite well wasn't exaggerated, it wasn't overly in your face, but it sounded nice. The graph and its little mountain would indicate that some of these things might not occur, and but it sounded great mm, everywhere I checked. I checked this track specifically because of how well the cymbals went. I wanted to hear, how's a keyboard and an organ's harmonic sound on this? Turns out it actually sounded quite good. So I went to one last one, and that would be Metallica because I want to hear some guitar, because it's doing well. Let's throw the next level on there. And I was listening to Metallica, and we were listening to and Justice for All, Blackened. Uh, the guitar on this is pretty dope, and it, it's it got, obviously, distortion pedals. I thought this sounded well, too. Um, listening to the volume at no point did i feel like oh, there's not enough bass because there's plenty of it and i didn't feel like oh the the trouble's too intense because i was listening to things that have intensity um like funeral for a friend um like the cymbal strikes um like boston foreplay it's been such a long time which is another intro transferring into a, a traditional track with lyrics i i enjoyed focusing on the detail as opposed to putting up with it so I thought they did a great job with this set. Um, next thing we're going to talk about is alternatives. So as far as listening to my library, I thought this did quite well. So next, we're done here. Let's go. I'm the ruler, the leader. Okay, alternatives. If you're interested in this set, what would be other sets that you might be interested as well? Because it's mm, close to the same price range and they're also hybrids. Um, so this is $285. I've listened to it with my library. I think it's a good set. You might not be fully convinced. So here's some other options that you might want to consider. The C-Audio X-Critical is $50 less if this 
is accurate. Um, and it's got better extension. And in some things it does better. It is a more relaxed listen than the volume. So if, you, like, if you're into kind of chill mode, um, th this might be a better option for you. And it's cheaper. So consider that. Take a look at some reviews. Consider the relationship between the person doing the review and the review itself, and then get all the information that you can. Me personally, if I wanted something that was a little more, I listen for longer sessions. Really, 30 minutes and more. I think the volume is a great set. Its weak point might be that it's a V, clearly, and it's maybe not for listening to an album and a half or you know, a two hour listen, something like that. Whereas the C audio would actually be what that would work for. Um, so, and it's cheaper, so consider that. Let's take that out. Another one would be the Audio Hekili. This is a set that's actually in stock right now. This has got more substantial bass if you like more, more kick. Um, this is more expensive than the Soft Ears, 285 versus 299. I'm sorry, it's a mangard. Um, so they're pretty close within about $15. Which one would I choose? The extension on the Hakili is, it's got slam and I don't know. I probably go with the Hakili personally, but everybody knows I love bass. I'm an audiophile. I want the low frequency to sound like it. At the same time, having said that, the volume doesn't sound like it's lacking. So I don't know if you really like a good punch you might go for the Hikili if it's not that important to you maybe the extension hook would be more important to you again I don't think the volume ever made me feel like oh, I wish it had more extension never happened so love this set is it something that you should take over the volume I got no reason to actually tell you unless you think that extension is this big deal um, and be aware that it's got a I love the set but let's be real is it something that you should clearly take over this? I can't point to anything and say, yeah, that's that's the reason why. So it's an option. Keep it in mind. Uh, I got no real thing to put out there for you. The other thing would be uh, Critical's another set that he did, which is the Blessing to Dusk. I am not personally a big fan of this because the shell never allowed for me to get a good fit, whereas the volume does allow me to get a good fit. But this is a set that's $329. Soft Ears is 285 so you're paying more money for this. But this is something a lot of people have fallen in love with. It's got a more polite bass. It's got, it treats vocals in a different way. It's maybe built for other libraries. If you have this set already, like I already have this, is it worth moving to the volume? I don't know why you do that because you're actually going down in price and you might be going down in technical ability as well. And I'm not sure why you would do that unless you thought that this set needed a little more impact. If that were the case, then the volume would be something that you should maybe make a move towards if it's within your budget because this definitely has more punch. I don't quite think it has the sheer detail, but that detail comes at the expense of the leanness with the vocals. So it depends on what you're going for. There's lots of sets that are quite popular and they're tuned very differently so there's a very wide audience out there. It depends on what you like. You definitely don't move from this to the volume if you really like this and like this tuning because you're going to get more bass with the volume. So be aware of that. If you're here and you're happy, enjoy being happy. I don't really think that it's worth moving to soft ears unless you want more punch. Uh, and then you've got the midnight as an option which is more affordable. So. Let me drop this. And then finally we get the Mangard T. This is an interesting set because it gets a lot of mixed reviews from reviewers, but it's loved by a lot of people. And at some point the cult tag has to move to another when it starts to get lots of reviews on several platforms and like this one on here. It, Linsoul doesn't require the, the verification of the reviews as it came with the Olina got a one star review before it was actually released. So that's when I became aware that uh, Hi-Fi Go is seems like they check more strictly. I, Lin Sol, if they're watching, please create a different mm, review system so that you don't get one star reviews and the games that some companies play because you, it's not a service to the buyers. I think the Mangra T is a excellent set. Um, my set is MMCX because it's so old. 
And it's $299, and it's uh, 6 BA, 1 DD, so it's got a few more BAs. Is this something you should grab? This treats treble differently. I think that the, if I had to choose the Manger T or the volume, um, God, I'd have to think about that, and that might shock the hell out of people. I, the volume's bass is really good for a rock library. And it's really good for a hip hop library. It's right on that line where it gives me enough on both instances. Manger T is a little bit more balanced in its sense that the whole frequency response, other than the upper treble, really fits in like an 8 to 10 dB box. It's nothing is going over the other thing. So that would be a consideration. No, oh, I might stick with this. I went into this expecting it to be okay. Uh, another version of. Uh, their tuning field which is kind of a version of the Harmon and turned out that it's a very impressive set um, in conclusion I'll just go right into conclusion $285 I think it's a good investment I think it fits well uh, I think the packaging is good I think it, they wasted some cardboard there but I like the hidden trap door I think the case it comes with it comes with nice tips um, in its price range if a lot of people start, if anybody comes out and says this is a really great set and it's crushes, curb stomps, and all that crap, back up and go look for another review. Nothing, IEMs are not MMA fighters. Nobody curb stomps and beats the crap out of anything else. Overstatements make people hesitate, and you should and click out and get away. Wait for people to give more balance. I think it's worth its price. I think it's competitive among other things in the same asking price. Uh, I think it fits good, and I think the presentation's good. So I don't have any reason to say this isn't for me. So I, I wreck it. It's a good set. Consider the alternatives. Consider your library, what's more important to you, um, and get more knowledge is power. This is my input. This is my two cents. It's worth four cents, but I'll, I'll put it in there. Um, yeah, good job by Soft Ears. I thought the color would be a turnoff, but I, I like it. It's different. I'm a fan. This is this is a good set, and I'm out.